What's poppin' T Squad? It's your girl Keisha, and I'm here with tonight's All T All Shade Bell Collective Season 1 Episode 2 review. If you weren't able to check out my Season 1 premiere episode, it is up right now on my channel, so make sure you check that out. All right, so on Episode 2, we start off with Latrice. She's at home. Her house is beautiful, by the way, um, in her gorgeous bedroom, picking out an outfit. She calls her publicist, Melanie, on the phone to talk about her upcoming hair care line she once again reiterates to us that you know she started from the bottom and now she's here on some drake type shit um that you know she started her um weave business out of the trunk of her car and that she worked really hard to get where she's at i hope and pray that her hair care line is it's is as successful as the you know uh weave line that she has going on her husband cliff aka generic howard hewitt walks in um and you know he speaks to um her publicist mail he was like how you doing beautiful or whatever and when she gets off the phone she tells him uh to stop like don't be calling her beautiful and he was like what it bothers you and she was like no and then cliff says then what's the problem then like you could tell like i said on this uh series premiere episode that he likes to antagonize her he likes to get underneath her skin and their age difference plays a part in how he's able to control the strings as far as her emotions go because latrice doesn't know how to hide her hand like it's obvious that him calling male beautiful bothered her if it didn't she would have never said anything so now he knows this and he's going to continue to do it to piss her off i don't know if they've had infidelity issues in the past or what or this is just something that he does like i said to trigger her but their relationship is very off to me um you can tell they're having marital issues um and like I said, I think the age difference plays a part in that. The fact that we find out he didn't even believe in her business at first, I think, plays a major part in it. Um, he tries to look girl her. And the fact that you call him daddy makes the situation even worse because he treats you like he's your like you're his daughter. And that's disgusting, especially when y'all are fucking and y'all are married. So, um, they discuss him um, investing into the hair care line. Once again, she wants him to respect her and treat her like an equal because he didn't even believe in her business in the first place. And it really bothered her. Like I said, it really hurt her feelings. My thing is, you ain't believe in me in the beginning. I don't want you to have nothing to do with my business. Like, you can still be my husband, but I don't want you to benefit off something that you didn't even fully support me in in the beginning. So, no, Howard Hewitt, I don't think so. You ain't getting in on this with your old Miami Vice looking ass. Um, Tambra meets with Tisha to discuss the brunch. Um, Tambra looked so much better in this scene to me. Um, I still can't stand that pale pink Barbie pink lipstick that she'd be wearing. It's so juvenile, especially for a 40 year old woman. Um, and I liked her hair so much better, uh, sleek and straight. It just looks so much better. All that hair on her head is just ridiculous. She is a very petite woman. She's very little. She's petite in size and in height. Then she got all that hair on her head looking like Elvira or somebody looking like, uh, it from, um, the Adams family. Like it's just too much. Goddamn her. I know she be hot. I know her neck be sweating like a motherfucker. So Tisha tells her how Latrice and Marie got into it over Latrice's hair at the brunch and how she didn't even get the chance to bring up the whole Ferris street project, which was, you know, to me, um, it was unfortunate because I think that this is a brilliant idea that not only the ladies can do, but other ladies in the community um, should be able to get in on as well. So Marie says that she's going to meet with this prominent lady named Miss Dorothy to help her with the Ferris Street project. So Tambra brings up her birthday uh, dinner that she's going to have and says that she invited all the ladies. But now she's worried that they're going to act up, especially considering that they acted a fool at the brunch. So now she don't know like what the fuck to do. So, meanwhile, during that whole entire scene, I just kept on concentrating on uh, Letitia's eyeshadow that was not blended at all. I don't know who did her makeup, but it was one block of black, one block of gold, and it was a, a precise line between the two. It wasn't blended together. Oh, Jesus. Um. So, Marie is at her office, and in comes her business partner, Essie, who's also her best friend, and they're 
talking about, you know, how busy Marie has been with the businesses and her husband, her little deadbeat ass husband, her son and being in school and her taking care of her grandchildren, the baby mamas and her own children that she has, which once again, I said, said to you guys on the series premiere episode that Marie, instead of worrying about some hair, that doesn't make or break her life need to be worried about the fact that you over here taking care of a grown ass husband of yours who you have not married once but twice who has cheated on you who's taking all these expensive ass trips on your ass who disrespects you then you got your grown ass son who disrespects you that had three kids that you're taking care of financially and helping to raise and on top of that you're uh taking care of his baby mamas that he done laid down and slept with girl you's a whole goddamn fool i don't know if them tight curls is too tight bitch but you need jesus and some bless oil. like the fuck is wrong with you how you calling yourself a boss but you ain't even the boss of your own personal life get the fuck out of here girl you sound crazy so um marie says you know sometimes i want to say no but then they ask and i break down and give in now once again the baby shouldn't have to suffer those are her grandkids of course she doesn't want her grandkids to suffer but at what point do you step back and have to demand that your son become a fucking man and you stop coddling him and enabling his grown ass if he was grown enough to lay down not once not twice but three times with three different women and produce babies nigga you need to be man enough to be able to take care of kids uh, said kids and not depend on your mommy to raise them for you and financially take care of him you're not teaching him anything by allowing him to basically skate off into the sunset and continue to fuck hoes and do what the fuck he want to do while you're taking the the brunt and the weight of him being a deadbeat ass father because that's essentially what you're doing um so essie her friend asked her about the brunch and marie says you know about latrice that she attacked my business and said i was lying about her hair this this and that and third well the way you came to her was condescending it was at the wrong inappropriate time you came to her on some like you know neck popping type shit you embarrassed her by bringing it up in front of all of those other ladies what did you expect so um marie and her confessional says i'm a customer i can a customer can make or break you and i will break you <laughs> once again this bitch acting like she is donald trump and she can fire anybody so marie tells essie that they are in fact going to tambra's uh birthday party and that essie is coming with her and she's going to gather latrice and get her together but as we saw in tonight's episode she ain't do shit so Miss Dorothy gives Letitia the cosign on Ferris Street, which I thought was really great. And today is at her beautiful home. I loved her home. It kind of gave me um the rustic uh farmhouse type of style home. It was beautifully decorated. I loved it. So Latrice comes by with some samples of her hair care line for Antoinette and they discuss the brunch and Antoinette says Marie she's delusional you cannot win with her Latrice says you know I don't argue with people I let my money speak for me and like I said uh, Latrice gives me Portia vibes she gives me season one Portia for Real Housewives of Atlanta she's kind of like cluelessly dumb adorably cute she got the sass she got the edge she's gonna really come into her own I can see her having the same type of storyline as Portia being in a relationship with a man that's older than her that's controlling and down talks her they're gonna get a divorce mark my words her and Howard Hewitt um gonna get a divorce she gonna strike out and be single and rich and fabulous she's gonna go through a tumultuous divorce she's gonna find herself she's gonna have her clean uh, d uh dingy dumb moments carlos king found the new portia williams so um latrice says you know i haven't seen this house since um your ex left you know i love it she loves what Antoinette has done with the place Antoinette is just really proud of herself you know for making the changes on the house so she came across this box of things that her ex or things that reminded her of her ex so she really wants to get rid of them get rid of them and that be the last step of you know cleansing her ex from her life so uh latrice and Antoinette discussed her having kids with her ex and she said that she didn't want to at the time because she didn't want to give up her career and also she had issues with 
uh, giving birth to biracial kids in Mississippi because she experienced racism herself and she didn't want her children to grow up in a environment where they would have had to choose whether they're black or white. But my feelings are that I feel like whether they were in the South or anywhere else, she would have still felt the same way. And that this was a conversation that she and her ex should have had before they even married each other. But you know, people be not talking about the important things when it comes to spending your life with somebody that's religion that's how you're going to raise your children how do you feel about you know family in-laws how is your credit how are, are you responsible you know when it comes to bills you know do you are you a cleanly person like these are things that needs to be discussed folks so um Tambra is at this boutique talking to one of her gay besties um, and the topic of kids comes up with her and she says, you know, that not at this very moment, but she is feeling the pressure from her family because she is 40 years old now. But she also reveals to us that she has frozen her eggs and that an NBA player once offered her a million dollars to have his baby. But she said no, because that goes against her morals. Well, let me tell you, bitch, slide into my goddamn DMs. Cause I don't know who this motherfucker was, but uh, I would have gave him a baby for a million motherfucking dollars, bitch. Sure the fuck will. I will pop this motherfucker out and give it right on to you and give my million dollars. <laughs> I see that little motherfucker on the weekend. Eyes the daddy, use the mama, bitch. Shit, I would have had that motherfucking baby. Use a goddamn fool. So um, Antoinette goes to the baseball field to get rid of the baseball paraphernalia or whatever the fuck she <laughs> she found at the house memorabilia her friend Kaylon or whatever her name was some white girl meet up with her they've been friends since I guess college Antoinette you know gets emotion cries about her ex because you know he was everything to her she was with him for a long period of time and she doesn't know what to do now that she's alone and she feels like she's a nobody now but in her confessional she reminds herself you know I'm enough I'm enough and I'm like you sure the fuck are enough bitch you a whole doctor a whole dentist out here in the street fuck that white man but that's what happens when you're in a relationship for a long period of time you lose yourself you become one with somebody and you you forget who you are as a person what you like what are your dislikes because you start to do everything as a couple and have to keep the other person in mind I remember after my last relationship I didn't even know how to grocery shop for myself anymore because I was so used to going to the grocery store with the both of us and picking out what we both wanted or him being the main person that was the cook around the house I didn't have to cook because he cooked all the time so I I had to relearn how to grocery shop. You know, it was weird. Like those things happen in relationships when you break up. So uh, it's the day of Tamara's birthday party. Um, Tisha's there first. She's one of the first people to arrive. And that wig sitting on top of her head, child, was so, ooh, it was a mess, child. It looked like some shit she got from her grandma Nadine's back of her closet then she had the nerve to put a headband on top of it i was like i don't know where you going girl but i need for you to go back home and try it again so tisha however wants the girls to squash their beef and things don't work out the way she wanted to once again i hated her makeup um latrice and her confessional say you know because her latrice antoinette and Howard Hewitt arrived together so they come into the venue and Latrice and her confessional say me and Zaddy walk in and we're looking like B and J <laughs> and I mean <laughs> when we walk on the scene <laughs> that's how it be and I was like girl even you had to laugh at that shit you couldn't even say that shit in your confessional with a straight face J and B were bitch where Who said that? Girl, y'all walked in there looking more like <laughs> Oprah and Stedman, bitch. <laughs> the fuck is you talking about? B and J, where, girl? Girl, you out your goddamn mind. You Y'all look more like shit. Who them uh, Al Roker and his wife? Girl, somebody old, but girl, Harold, uh, Harry Belafonte and somebody. Cicely Tyson and whoever the fuck she been over there married to. Girl, Lou Gossip. <laughs> And his wife, shit, James Earl Jones and his wife. But B and J, girl, you was a motherfucking lie, girl. You really lost your motherfucking mind. So Latrice looked, however, she looked gorgeous. She looked beautiful. Um, Antoinette looked cute, but Antoinette makeup to me be too. She get them old lady Mary Kay colors, like her lipstick color, like. Don't nobody wear that burgundy ass lip color. And then her weave just be too fat. It just be too many goddamn bundles in her head. Like, goddamn. In the South, these hoes pack on all the weave. Shit. So, um, 
Latrice and her confessional say, anybody that knows me knows that when you see me, you see Zaddy. He wants to know where I'm at at any given moment. If he's not included, he's not happy. Bitch, that's abuse. <laughs> like, that shit is not cute. Then he got to know where you at every second of the day. Like, what the fuck is that about? Why does he have to keep tabs on you like you're a fucking dog? Like, you're his property or some shit like that. And why, if he's not included in a conversation or in a moment, he gets upset? That's weird, girl. That is not, that's not cute at all. That's, that's controlling and it's weird as fuck. So, um, Latrice tells Tisha when they all sit down at the table that she didn't like the way Marie came at her at the brunch. And Latrice says, you know, we supposed to be at a women's empowerment event and she want to talk about hair. Like if that was your highest level of professionalism, then honey, I have no conversation with, for you. We have never even heard of her. And I was like, ooh, the shade, honey, the shade. <laughs> so Tisha say, you know, well, you know, they get money, they take trips and they fly all over the world. And Antoinette say, what Marie do? And Tisha say she's a multi-millionaire who owns a home healthcare agency. And Antoinette say ordinarily professional when she is not at a brunch. And Tisha say, well, what I'm not going to do is let you sit here and attack Marie. And I was like, come on, pit bull in the skirt. Shit, that headband gave her powers. That headband gave her Wonder Woman powers, bitch. I love the way Tisha stood up for her homegirl. Like, you ain't about to talk about my friend in my face and she ain't here. Like, huh, she might not be here, bitch, but I am. Even though Marie was wrong for the... The fact that she started all this shit, I still like the fact that Tisha had her back. And I gives it up for Tisha for that one. Because she checked Antoinette's ass real quick. And uh, Antoinette was like, oh, no, I that was just a follow-up question. Tisha was like, oh, okay, you know, because that's what we're not going to do today, sis. So um, Cliff then jumps in and say, okay, enough of all this heckling and gibbering and jabbing at the table. Turn the music up, DJ. And I was like... Are you the sixth bell? Like, bitch, what? Cliff, go sit your ass down, please, sir. Shut the fuck up. Like, he giving me Peter Thomas vibes, and I'm not feeling it at all. Um, He about to get on my whole entire nerves. So then Marie arrives at the party with her Betty Boop curls, honey, and her sexy cat suit and heels. Gotta say, Marie gave us body outside of the office building, baby. I don't know if that's homegrown or... Or uh, she had to lay on the table, but she looked it good with that goddamn cat suit on. And her look, I think she had on some Versace heels. Didn't really care for her Betty Boop hairstyle. I just don't like that hairstyle overall. It's just played out to me now. But, um, yeah, she looked great. So Latrice points her out to clip like that's the girl that's that's, that's her so latrice and her confessional say you know marie bo peep <laughs> walks in with her finger waves jail to the side <laughs> i was like i see you latrice with your shady ass so they sit and tisha asks marie will she talk to latrice because you know we're all bosses and marie was like she ain't no boss look what happened when i came to her as a customer like no i'm not doing it again but it was more than you coming to her as a customer you embarrassed that lady and you already came to her on some like Bitch, you're her raggedy. You out here trying to scam folks type shit. So, um, Tambra arrives giving us Latoya Jackson tease that her. Whoo, Jesus. It was like a, a tumbleweed on top of her head. I was like, did you buy one of Latoya Jackson old wheels, uh, uh, old wigs off of eBay? Like, what the fuck is going on with all this goddamn hair, bitch? And it looks like it was filmed in the summertime. Bitch, you're hot. Your head is hot. It's sweating underneath there. Then she had on a light color eyeshadow. That pale color lipstick just washes her face out. Like, I need for her to retire that fifth grade ass lipstick. So, um, Latrice publicist Melanie asks, uh, well, no, she, she speaks to Marie. You know, like, hey, girl, you know, nice to meet you. Then she tells Latrice to come over to the table with them. So Latrice and Cliff come over to the table. Everybody's sitting at the table. Marie is paying Latrice dust. She won't even look at her. She got an attitude. So Melanie was like, you know, so what happened, you know, at this brunch? Like, what's going on? What's the tea, bitch? And Marie was like, you know, today is not the day. We're here to celebrate Tamra. Let's just put that on pause for later. And in her confessional, she said it's not the appropriate occasion. But I'm like, bitch, it was the appropriate occasion for you to bring up some hair drama at your homegirls brunch. Make it make sense, girl. Make it make sense. And remember, you said you supposed to be coming out to check her. And then when you had the opportunity, you was on mute. Okay, Marie, are you a confessional gangster? I'm starting to wonder. So, um, 
Tisha then proposed the toast, but Marie won't toast to the other lady. She's sitting there with an attitude with them tight girls. Latrice and Cliff, Cliff then get up to leave and walk away because they was like, okay, girl, because she tried. The girl didn't want to have a conversation. So Marie was like, oh, you already know I don't do that fake shit. Like, mm -mm, I don't do all that fake shit. Tisha and her confessional say, you know, Marie won't even acknowledge Latrice's presence. Latrice wanted to talk to her, but she wasn't feeling it. So Tisha say to her, you can't be sitting here like you the villain that you just a macho and you didn't started all this stuff. Hear what the girl got to say. And I was like, I really like Tisha. So far, Tisha is my favorite personality wise, because even though you're my friend, I'm still going to check you. You started this shit, finish it. You know what I'm saying? You should have heard the girl out. Like you're being ignorant. You're coming across looking crazy as the villain. Let's not do this, sis. And she got her together to the point where Marie asked, tear the fuck up. Cause I'm happy that Tisha gave her tough love. Like bitch, somebody need to talk to your ass. So Tisha pulls Antoinette to the side so they can have a conversation. And Antoinette already knows what's about to go down. Um, cause she's been talking shit about, Tisha's brunch so they sit down and Antoinette says you know your brunches ain't gotta be my thing but it's a good it, for it to be a good brunch what you're doing is good you know there's room for improvement and I want to help you so Tisha's like you know I don't have any bad blood sis and so was like I talked about your brunch and Tisha say that's okay I talked about your hair not being pulled out <laughs> At the front, I hollered because she gathered Antoinette in 5.2 seconds, seconds and all that Antoinette could do was laugh because she knew the shit was true. And that's when they became good Judies. I love that. We talked about each other. We can laugh about it. Let's move along. Antoinette says, you know, moving forward, you won't hear me speak an ill word towards you. And if somebody says that I did, you know, it's not the truth because I said to what I said to your face. And I appreciated that. So teacher was like, now we just got to figure out this situation between Latrice and Marie. And basically, I after that the episode went off and next week's episode looks like it's about to be lit because um Marie's son uh punched a hole in the wall and cussed her ass the fuck out I can't wait to see this shit like I said she got bigger fish to be frying than some old dry ass weave girl um overall I give tonight's episode of Bell Collective I give it a B plus tonight's episode was pretty decent I'm really loving the way this show is forming um i can't wait to see how things play out so far personality wise my favorite is tisha second up my favorite would have to be antoinette latrice then tambra tambra's not really giving me much uh, she's uh... Let me know who y'all feeling the most so far. What did y'all think about tonight's episode? Whose side are you on when it comes to the Latrice Marie saga? Um, let's talk down below in the comment section. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell button. Thank you guys for watching. Love you. See you on the next one. Bye.